Welcome. In this video, we will learn how to solve the V-cube 4, which is the beginning of solving any higher level cube, like the V-cube 6 or the V-cube 9. Before going on with the tutorial, you need to know how to solve the V-cube 3. Here are the timestamps of each chapter of the video. Have fun! Our beginner method will reduce the V-cube 4 into a V-cube 3 just like most pro methods, but with more moves. Let's begin by comparing those puzzles to understand what we are dealing with. Corners are identical in both of them. The centers of the 3x3 are divided into four smaller center pieces. Finally, edge pieces are also divided into pairs. Having this in mind, you can see that these cubes can be solved with the same moves. This is why, to solve a completely scrambled cube, we will connect all the centers and the edge pieces to make it look like a 3x3. Three three. That way, we can make use of our 3x3 three three knowledge. Dividing the centers into smaller pieces means that now centers are free to move around the cube. Thus, center pieces no longer define the color of each side. Also, just like the 3x3, three three, most pieces are unique and not interchangeable. For example, we cannot place a corner in the position of a centerpiece or vice versa, nor can we interchange edge pieces unless we are not looking to solve our cube. The only exception occurs in the centers, where each color's small centers are interchangeable because they are exactly the same. This peculiarity will be even more pronounced on larger cubes. Let's return to the 4x4. Four four. As you can see, the color scheme is the same. Black is opposite of yellow, blue is opposite of green, red is opposite of orange, and black, blue, and red are positioned in a clockwise orientation. It is also natural that V-cube 4 can make more moves than a V-cube 3. Consequently, we need to expand our notation system. To accommodate the wider moves, or double moves, we add a lowercase w after the move's capital letter. Hence, we keep all the 3 by 3 notation like R inverted, which would tell us to turn the right side 90 degrees counterclockwise, and we add moves like RW2, which would instruct us to turn both right layers 180 degrees. Finally, to move an inner layer without moving the outer layer, we use a lowercase letter. For example, lowercase r would instruct us to turn the inner right layer clockwise. Let's now move on to the solution. The first center. The first step to making our 4x4 look like a 3x3 three three is to connect all the 2x2 two two centers like that. Let's start with the black center. In this puzzle, creating 2x1 bars will be our core move. For the first center, find two black center pieces and connect them into a bar, like so. Then find the other two and connect them without messing with the first bar. If connecting this pair creates problems with the first pair, undo your last moves and turn the first bar vertically. Now you can connect the second bar like so. Finally, connect the two bars. It is quite easy. The second center. We just finished the first center. Let's go for the second one, which will be the yellow. Position your black center on the bottom before moving on to the yellow center. Find or create a 2 by one bar just like before. As you know, the yellow side should be opposite of the black. Thus, this bar belongs here. If you just try to place it on the top layer like that, you will immediately see that this move messes up the black center. To avoid it, place the yellow bar vertically on the left. Bring the right side down, load it with the bar, and then return it. That way, we solved the first bar without messing up the black center. Now create or find the second yellow bar. In my case, the bar is ready. And then place it on the yellow side with the same trick. Position both yellow bars vertically on the left. Now bring the top layer's right centers on the front side with a wide right move. 
load the yellow bar on the right side, and return it to the top layer with the opposite wide turn. The third center. Two centers are now complete. Let's go for the third one. Turn the black side on the right and the yellow side on the left. We can freely move the outer layers and this middle one without messing up the first two centers. Let's continue with the blue center. We can connect those two centers to form a bar. Then turn it vertically to go for the second one. Remember to keep yellow and black centers on the sides to avoid messing with them. Find the last two blue center pieces and connect them. Then connect the bars to form the blue center. The fourth center. Now we have to find out which center should be above the blue one. To do it, take a look at the solved V cube 3. If black is on the right and blue is on the front, we should place red on the top. Another way to do it is to remember that black, blue, and red should be in a clockwise orientation. If you place the centers incorrectly, then it will be really late when you find out, so be careful. To solve the last three centers, all of our moves will look very similar. The best thing we can do is to make a wide right turn on the right or the left, make some manipulation on the face, and then undo the wide move. Let's solve the red center on top of the blue one. There is already one small centerpiece in this position, and here is another one. We can connect them with this wide move. Preserve them on the left and undo the wide move. Then we have to look for the other two red centers. Connect them with the same pattern. Make a setup move, a wide move. Store the bar vertically and undo the wide move. You can now place both bars vertically on the left, make a wide right move, load the second bar on the right, and undo the wide move. We just finished the fourth center. The last two centers. Now we only have to solve two centers, the green and the orange. Obviously, the orange should be opposite of the red, and the green should be opposite of the blue. There is a nice trick for the last two centers. We only have to focus on solving one of them, and the other center will be solved automatically. Let's go for the orange. Ideally, to solve it, you need to form two orange bars to solve it like before. But if you are not that lucky, you can try what we are about to show you. This part is quite intuitive, but it requires some trial and error. Our case is one of the hardest. Take a look. We have to build orange on the top. We can connect those two to create this bar to the top layer and preserve that piece with this move. Then we can rotate the top layer to preserve the orange bar and undo the wide move. Once you have only one centerpiece to go, you have to find a way to preserve this bar and connect the remaining two centerpieces to form the second bar at the same time. To preserve this bar, we need to use the left wide move. But before doing that, we have to make a front move to set up those two. Now we can perform the wide move, preserve the orange bar on the right, and undo the wide move to solve both centers. And that was how to make the centers. Edges. Now we have to pair the edges. While doing this, we can freely move all the outer layers of the puzzle. To pair two small edge pieces, execute the following steps. Find two small edge pieces that need to connect like this one with blue and red, and this one. Place those edges on the front right and front left positions. Then, make sure that one of them is in the upper position and the other is in the lower position. If both are in the same position, then rotate the right one 180 degrees. You can do it easily with these moves. 
R F inverted U R inverted F Now we are ready to connect them with a UW or a UW inverted. Once we connect them, we need to replace the paired edge with a scrambled one and restore the centers. To do it, take the edge to the top layer. Replace it using U-turns and return the new spare edge in its place. Now you can undo the wide move and restore all the centers. But as you can see, our paired edge is still untouched. By doing so, you are affecting three edges, the starting two and the replacement one. Thus, you don't have to worry about ruining anything. Make sure that there is one spare edge piece on the top to use as a replacement. As we said, you can freely move edges around by turning the outer layers. Keep on doing that for the remaining edge pieces. The last two edges. This strategy fails only if you end up with two unsolved edges. Just like this example where only these two remain to be solved and all we want to do is swap one small edge piece from each one. This can be done with the following trick. Place the edge pieces in the same positions, front right and front left. But this time, make sure that the same small edge pieces are both in the upper positions and the other two small edge pieces are in the lower positions. Then you can just use this small algorithm. UW inverted, R, F inverted, U, R inverted, F, U, W. Well done. Now your 4x4 looks just like a 3x3, and we can solve it like one, with only two small exceptions. The 3x3 state. Let's go for it. We solve the black daisy just like a 3x3. Then we can make the cross. Afterwards, we can solve the black corners as usual. The final step is to finish the second layer. The OLL parity. The yellow cross is the first step where there is a 50% chance that you need to make an extra step. Remember that on a 3x3 you cannot have an odd number of edge pieces facing the top. On the 4x4 this is not the case. If you have one or three edge pieces facing the top, this is known as the OLL parity error and can be solved with this algorithm. RW2 B2 U2 LW U2 RW inverted U2 RW U2, F2, RW, F2, LW inverted, B2, RW2. Most people memorize this algorithm only after playing with the puzzle for a long time, so we suggest that you just write it down for now. Now you can finish the top layer until the last step. Orient the corners like a 3x3, three three, then permute them. And now, try to solve the edge pieces. The PLL parity. If you end up with only two edges unsolved, this is called PLL parity error and can be mended with this simple algorithm. Lowercase l2, u2, lowercase l2, uw2, lowercase l2, u2, uw2. After this step, you should be able to solve the edges normally.
Well done. You just solved the VCube 4. In the video's description, you can find all the algorithms used, our social media to get updates about your cube, and our store to get you a new VCube 5. Have a nice spinning day.